I want to get to the Golshani Rod, but before we do that, uh -huh. let's uh, maybe spend a little bit more time uh, speaking about uh, Afghanistan. And uh, in addition to you know the, the sort of Sufi teachers you, you met with, these profound uh, solitary saints, um, what about ordinary Afghan people who maybe are suffering? Um, who, what, what, what sort of spirituality was maybe palpable for you in, in that context? Uh, given you know, taking into account the, the sort of diverse uh, influences that you're likely encountering, uh, foreign and domestic and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, did you did you sense that that, that there are, you're, you know that uh, that this spiritual dimension of Islam of the Sufism is, is is somehow affecting the, the entire culture? Well, yes. The, the uh, there's no place like Afghanistan. Um, there there's no uh, there's no greater friends of God and there's no greater satans to find in one and the same country. It is a people of extremes. Um, and I, I had traveled a great deal on sailing ships and have been to many countries and seen many dangers, uh, many adventures, and I have seen no adventure like Afghanistan. And one of the great adventures in Afghanistan is to live in the moment. The people are um, the not everyone, these are all different people as I say, but the, the friends of God are numerous. They're simple people. Those of you who have heard me give interviews, uh, you know, you know that um, I always emphasize how amazing the, the, the spirituality of, of the, the villagers of Afghanistan, simple people. And they don't have to be villagers. I don't mean that they necessarily must be so, but there's a the, the beauty of not just Islam, but the beauty of the, the varieties of Sufi expression that blossomed in Afghanistan, they still permeate the culture despite all of the destruction, despite all of the uh, outside influences, all of the need need that often leads to treachery and deceit on the one hand, but the same need leads to uh, profound acts of generosity. In the Spy of the Heart, I mentioned uh, Abdul Hai Beg Zadeh. So those of you who, who hear his last name, you understand that he's like, uh, he's a nobleman from the Uzbek tribe, you see, he's a Beg Zadeh. And, uh, <coughs> But he was a son of a farmer. But I always thought of him as a prince, like his name, because he absolutely was a prince. He was far superior to myself in terms of his ethics and his concern. And so when we would travel, uh, and there were many, many like him, of course he was killed protecting others. Meaning that the problem in war is that good people, they give their lives. They give so much that they end up even giving their lives. And, uh, but among the rural people, there is a profound uh, kindness and hospitality and generosity. At the time that I was there, I went back in 2004, looking for the people I knew. I went to the villages and the rural areas, and things were the same. When I was in the cities, things were different. There was, there was, um, th things had gone downhill, let's just say that. But in the villages, it was the same. Go to the villages. I used to take off on horseback away from my protectors just so I could be alone with the villagers to see what they would do. Because if I went with um, Abdul Hai Beg Zadeh or somebody like that, they always treated me specially so the villagers knew that I was some kind of exotic person. And I wanted to see what the villagers would do if they didn't know who I was. And they had no idea who I was. The villagers had no idea. Those villagers, many of them, had no idea what the United States was. 
Once we were stopped when I worked for the UN, and these people that stopped us, they had never heard of the United Nations. And I was trying to explain to them who the United Nations was. <laughs> this is in Fario province in uh, 1990. But they have, uh, despite uh, the, the, the simplicity, lack of education, they have uh, uh, what I mentioned very often, what I learned from them was um, uh, tawakot and sabr. And I had very little of either of those qualities, see. So to travel for months with Afghans who will hike for 14 hours a day and then stop in the evening to have a bowl of the simplest kind of soup and some bread that you throw in and soak up and, and that's all you have and maybe that's all you're going to have to sleep in places that are lice and flea infested and complain hardly at all. See, this is the, the nature of, of, of spiritual people. They have, uh, it's very easy to read about spirituality. It's very hard to practice spirituality. And these people, many of them, they were raised in, a, in an atmosphere of, of uh, respect and kindness and concern. And of course, if it doesn't stick, it, the, same, the same culture will, will give rise to a, a powerful demon who, who will use the system and become a tyrant uh, or a usurper or a murderer. And that's why in Afghanistan it's so exciting because you don't know for sure if you're going to live till nightfall. You might live till nightfall. I always did the ablution every day. I wasn't a Muslim. I thought, well, if I die, I should be washed. So I would, I would, uh, even though I wasn't saying the prayers with the Muslims, I was still doing the ablutions. And I, I, I thought really that nobody knows. We don't know. We saw yesterday some people died. Yesterday they hit a mine. They were, they became sick and, and uh, so many tragedies. Uh, but God uh, guides um, whoever he wishes through this, you see. So, uh, so the people are profoundly, they, they, all, almost every Afghan from, say, my generation, uh, of which there are several people here, like uh, Wafi John and Hamid John and others, older Afghans, uh, uh, they know that in Afghanistan, Almost everyone has a Sufi connection. Whether or not they practice Sufi spirituality, that's a different matter. But everyone has a linkage to somebody in a spiritual tradition. I was, despite the heart, I didn't write about everybody. But Wafi John is my witness. I was the student of his uncle. I was the disciple also of his uncle, Ibrahim John, who was a Sufi. And he was Qadiri and he had other affiliations. Uh, he played music. He taught me to play music, made me play music and sing with them so we could go into special states playing music. See, so I have other stories I didn't write about, but they're right here in America. I met, I met uh, Waki John's uncle in, at Mansera up in, in northern Pakistan. And, and became friends right away, and we stayed friends all through his life. And when, when Wafi John was younger and I was younger, Wafi John would see me with his uncle, and, and he, he knew that, that I had a special connection huh, to, to your uncle. That, and, and his uncle had, goes back generations of Sufis from this. You see. So anybody who knows Afghanistan, they know that the whole culture is saturated with, with Sufi viewpoint. And then, of course, the outsiders come in and they say, um, this is wrong. You, you must not pray at the tombs of these spiritual teachers. We're going to destroy these tombs so that you don't have a temptation to pray at these tombs. Uh, you should learn how to correctly pronounce these verses of the Quran. You should learn how to pray properly, you see. But the old tradition of Afghanistan is based on love and, and the most astonishing generosity and, and friendship, friendship, like uh, uh, Wafi John's uncle, Abraham John, he is the, the, the 
living manifestation of the true friends. No matter what you approach him with, no matter what state you are in, no matter what your need is, he will accommodate you. Am I right? Didn't matter. You need money, you need advice, you need a friend. Uh, it doesn't matter. Some, some uh, Jehovah's Witnesses came to see him. I was at his house in Centerville. He invites them in. He says, oh, we have guests. He invites them in and they, they, say, they say, we want to talk to you. He says, wait, we have hospitality. So there's tea and food made and it's brought. This is going on for hours. And he says, we want, they say, we want to tell your religion. He says, well, yes, of course, tell, tell me about your religion. And they spent all this time talking and he listens and he's smiling the whole time. And afterwards, he waits a very long time. And then he says, this is excellent. Now, I want to tell you about my religion. <laughs> and I watched as after a while, they, they just realized they're not getting anywhere. And they're supposed to, I don't know how many houses they're supposed to visit that day. But they, they, they don't flee, but they, they, they have to kind of find an escape to get out of the house, you see. But, but he, never, never a moment of disrespect, never, never a moment of cynicism. See, I was very cynical watching all this, and, and, and Ibrahim John was never a moment unkind or judgmental or cynical of these, of these people. He thought, these are lovely human beings. They're visiting. They want to visit my house. They're honoring my house. We must make them some food. We must give them some hospitality. Oh, they want to tell us about their religion. We will listen to them. And then now, maybe they'll listen to us, too, see? <laughs> so so it's, it's come to America, see? These people have come to America, and then they pass away here, huh?